This is Ask Brock. I'm Brock Yorty. This week's question comes from Mike. Brock, I'm having issues mixing mud. Please help. It's a great question, Mike. And I think about in the early 90s when my family got their first rotary rig and we got it all set up and we had that new mud pan, we had the thimble in place, we had good circulation going and I grabbed that bag of bentonite and I dumped it at the back of the mud pan at the foot valve because we didn't have a hopper yet and it just clumped up and it was all over the place. And that's, you know, really how I ended up getting to become a classically trained mud guy was we called our local fluids engineer and he came out and he started laughing and he goes yep a lot of folks start this way and uh, I started learning about the properties and everything it takes to make a good drilling fluid but let's start with the basics our drilling fluids are 98 percent water so if we think about that our foundation has to be good and again you can talk to all the great mud mentors and they're going to say this but we're looking for six grains hard under 100 parts per million calcium hardness uh, 500 parts per million chlorides and 50 parts per million under for chlorine so we treat with soda ash and that's going to be a chemical reaction that's going to precipitate out that calcium hardness and raise our pH and um, we have that set next if it's salt you know we need to change water sources and maybe you've had all winter where it's been easy to mix and you've moved to a different site and things have started to melt and obviously this isn't a water well if this is the situation because we should be using potable water to drill our water well and not something for from a foreign water source or a surface water source but maybe you're doing some industrial drilling and you're able to pull out of that local ditch or stream to make your drilling fluids and now we've had all this snow melt and runoff and we had salt on the roads and now we have an x factor of you know additional chlorides in the water that we didn't have Finally, uh, you know, working in the municipal water infrastructure stuff, being beyond 50 parts per million chlorine is really hard to get at unless, you know, you're in an industrial area and you're pulling from some hydrants that have been mass chlorinated and this is the end of the hydrants or there's some X factors, but most of the time, 50 parts per million chlorine is not going to be it. So that would be our base where I'd want to start. And obviously there are X factors of other hardness out there and other contaminations that can affect sodium bentonite that maybe we didn't know we had a magnesium hardness or something like that. And that's a good reason to get a fluids trainer, you know, a fluids engineer out there and have that discussion with them on what's happening. Next, mixing. You know, we need a good shear point we need a good jet hopper we need to be looking at how that is configured and making sure we're getting a great deal of shear right as it's getting into the mud pan and then or the pit and as it rotates through is it a piston pump or is it a centrifugal pump or what type of pump are you mixing with because every point that it goes through is going to be another shear point that's going to break up those bentonite platelets and get it into the slurry that we need so for my basics, I'm making sure I'm testing my water quality, and then I make sure I have a great deal of shear so that I have that. And then finally, you know, one of those things that catches us every once in a while happens to be how we're mixing, our order of addition. And again, I can think of all the great, you know, if it's Jeff or if it's Ron or Gary or Ed or my little brother Chad, all those guys out there that would go, what's your order of addition? Because maybe the new guy decided, heck, it's easier if I start adding that PHPA first, and then we start adding bentonite. And obviously, that clay in inhibition is attacking our fancy sodium bentonite, which is just clay, and it's preventing it from shearing out. So those are, those are the big things to think about is, got my water quality right, I got my shearing right, and then I'm adding, after I've pre-treated with soda ash, I'm adding my bentonite, then my pack polymers, and then my clay inhibition polymers last, or whatever else you're going to be adding into that system. So get a local fluids engineer out there, somebody you're comfortable with, and go through these processes. But 
that's what it is. It's back to the basics of making sure that I got a good foundation, I'm shearing out, and that I'm uh, mixing in the right order. Great question, man. Let me know how it turns out. Thanks. Thank you.